The first important concept is that of the transformation zone because that is where cervical cancer begins. Now here we have a picture of the uterus showing the cervix and the vagina. The cervix consists of two parts, the endocervix and the ectocervix. The ectocervix is the part that projects into the vagina, also called the portia vaginalis part of the cervix. Now the endocervix is lined by simple columnar epithelium which consists of tall columnar cells with basal nuclei and just beneath the cells are these reserve cells. The function of these reserve cells is to give rise to new columnar cells as the old ones are shed off. The reserve cells are also bipotential which means that under special conditions they can give rise to squamous epithelial cells. The ectocervix that is the part of the cervix which projects into the vagina is lined by stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. We know that stratified epithelium, squamous epithelium consists of multiple layers of epithelial cells resting upon a basement membrane. Now to the naked eye, the columnar epithelium of the endocervix appears bright blood red in color whereas the epithelium of the ectocervix will appear pale pink in color. So what about VI and Willi? So visual inspection with acetic acid and visual inspection with Lugol's iodine. As I just mentioned, these would be the screening tests of choice in a resource poor setting. For example, where if you want to organize a camp for screening women in a village or in a peripheral area where you don't have a laboratory, you don't have a cytopathologist, you don't have HPV detection kits, what you can do is you can perform VI and Willi. Healthcare workers can be trained to perform VI and Willi. They can screen out the high risk women and then maybe send them to a higher center for further management. As the name suggests, visual inspection. So here essentially you are examining the cervix with the naked eye. In VIA, you smear the cervix with 3 to 5 percent acetic acid solution. The principle of VIA is that acetic acid produces a reversible coagulation of the nuclear proteins. Now pre-malignant cells, malignant cells, they have a high nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. So more nuclear proteins, so they would take up the acetic acid to produce a dense acetovite lesion. Now, VI results are typically classified as VI negative if we see no aceto whitening or just faint aceto whitening and VI positive if we see a dense opaque aceto white plaque on the cervix within the transformation zone with well defined borders that would be a VI positive lesion. Now what about Willi? Now in Willi we smear the cervix or stain the cervix using Lugol's iodine or Schiller's iodine. Now mature squamous epithelial cells or normal squamous epithelial cells have a high content of glycogen. Glycogen is stained by iodine to give a brown black color. However, the pre-malignant or malignant rapidly dividing cells do not have any glycogen stores. So they do not take up the iodine and they appear bright yellow mustard in color, right? So a Willi negative region is brown areas. And a Willi positive lesion is a lesion which shows up as Schiller iodine negative. That is, it doesn't take up the iodine and appears bright yellow or mustard in color. So here we have the images. Now this is a normal cervix stained with acetic acid. Here this is essentially normal. We cannot see any aceto whitening, maybe a little bit of faint aceto whitening here. This is essentially VI negative. Now here we can see an obviously VI positive lesion. There is this dense aceto white lesion involving circumferentially the whole of the transformation zone with very well defined borders. This is a VI positive lesion. Similarly, these are two pictures here. Here the anterior lip of the cervix is showing a distinctly aceto white VI positive lesion and this corresponds to the iodine negative deep mustard Willi positive lesion. So, then the healthcare workers, once we have screened or you know uh, identified these women, we can send them ahead for directed biopsies for this, from this area and further management. So 
what about liquid based cytology? How is it different from the conventional pap smear? Now the liquid based cytology is performed using a cervical broom. This device is called a cervical broom. It is used in the same way as an IR spatula rotated 360 degree over the ectocervix with the longest bristles protruding into the endocervix and capturing some endocervical cells. Then the brush is removed and it is shaken vigorously in a liquid preservative solution so that all the cells which have been picked up by the brush are transferred into the liquid solution. After that, this preservative solution with the cell suspended in it is taken to the laboratory. It is filtered and centrifuged to remove all the mucus, debris and all the artifactual material. And the pellet that is obtained after centrifugation contains all the disquamated cervical cells. This pellet is then used to prepare a thin even smear on a slide and the pellet can also be used for HPV testing. So, let us quickly consider what are the differences of conventional pap smear versus liquid based cytology. The first thing is that with the conventional pap smear only about 20 to 30 percent of the cells which are picked up by the IR spatula or the brush are actually transferred onto the slide. Whereas with the liquid based cytology almost 90 percent of the cells are transferred into the preservative solution. So, this leads to a higher sample adequacy. Now, we all know that the quality of the slide of a pap smear is operator dependent. It is dependent on the person who has taken the pap smear. So, there can be a lot of problems. There may be improper fixation. You may have left an air drying artifact if you have not put the slide quickly enough into the fixative solution. Then there can be mucus, debris, blood collected from the cells which could be overlapping the cervical cells and obscuring their details. And finally, the smear that is prepared on the slide, it tends to be thick at places and thin at places. All this affects the microscopic readability of the smears leading to a higher number of unsatisfactory smears. Now, essentially these problems are all obviated with the liquid based cytology. You filter, centrifuge the specimen, remove all the mucus and debris, you get a thin even slide at the end. So, this improves the microscopic readability of the slide. The biggest advantage of liquid based cytology is that the cervical pellet or the sample can be used for concurrent HPV testing which is not possible with the sample that you obtained with the pap smear. So, now, what is the difference between cryotherapy, the ablative treatment and conization or LEAP which are the excisional methods? When would you use either of them? So, first of all, ablation which I said is synonymous for cryotherapy is generally suitable for treatment of the more milder CIN lesions such as CIN1 and sometimes selected cases of CIN2. Whereas, excisional procedure are more suitable for the higher grade CIN lesions that is CIN2 and CIN3. In CIN3, you would always use an excisional procedure. Why? Now, excisional procedures are superior to ablative procedures because you get a cone of cervical tissue which you can subject to further histological examination to confirm the severity of your lesion, to confirm the diagnosis. Second, you can examine the bigger chunk of tissue of cervix and make sure that there is no hidden occult cancer anywhere and you can even examine the margins of the lesion under the microscope to make sure that you have removed the disease in its entirety to decrease recurrences. Now all this is not possible with ablative method because all we are doing is essentially destroying the abnormal cells. We do not have histological proof of the extent of destruction. Okay, so let us just discuss the management of biopsy proven CIN. So, you have the biopsy tissue which you have taken after colposcopic assessment of the cervix. If the histopathologist reports it as CIN2 or CIN3, then you definitely need to treat the patient. And treatment could be with ablative procedures or excisional procedures. Excisional procedures are preferred for CIN2 and CIN3, especially for CIN3, 
you would prefer only an excisional procedure because it is a higher grade abnormality. So we have been mentioning the term colposcopy and biopsy, colposcopic magnification and again and again. So what is a colposcope? A colposcope is essentially a low power binocular microscope which helps us to visualize the cervix under magnification. Now normally the colposcope will produce a 16 to 40 times magnification of the cervix. Usually colposcopy is done as an OPD procedure. Most hospitals have a colposcope installed in one of their OPD rooms. There are three steps to a colposcopic cervical procedure. 